Thanks for watching Wood and Shop. I'm Joshua Farnsworth. Welcome back to the video series that's following me along as I turn the old huge RV garage into my workshop and a hand tool woodworking school here uh, just outside of Charlottesville, Virginia. If you haven't seen the first two videos, you should probably go back and see those so you can see the progress I've made. Once I finish the drywalling, I first put battens behind where the wood stove would go because I wanted to make a priority of getting the wood stove in because winter has been setting on really quickly. I decided to not attempt a wood stove installation by myself. I don't think my insurance would have covered a self-installation in a situation like this. Uh, I didn't want to burn down my house or have the roof leak. And uh, then I, I had to decide what I would purchase for a wood stove. You know, I grew up with an old Franklin wood stove uh, over in central Utah. And uh, that wood stove just brought back a lot of memories to me. However, you really shouldn't use those really old wood stoves anymore because A, they're not as safe, but B, they're not nearly as efficient. You use up a lot of wood. Uh, and your insurance won't cover you if you don't have one of those EPA certified wood stoves. So I got tired of getting rejected on Craigslist over and over again every time a good wood stove would come on. So I decided to just go and look for a new one. And fortunately I found a really good one uh, that was recommended by a lot of people that was fairly affordable. Um, I'll put the, the model and make, I can't remember right now, but I'll put it on my uh, accompanying blog post to this. Fortunately, I have stacks of brick all over my, my yard, all over my property that uh, date back to the 1990s when this workshop and the house was built. So I, it only took me about 10 to 15 minutes to install the hearth. After the guys installed my wood stove, I got back to installing the battens all over the drywall seams uh, all around the workshop. And just a, just a little explanation. I didn't just install the battens because I'm lazy. That's a big part of it. I don't like dry, I don't like sanding and taping and mudding drywall. But uh, a lot of it, the reason was because I grew up in a farmhouse that my parents back in the, I think it was the late 60s, uh, they, they got an old building that had been run down and had been used as a grain granary for years and they remodeled it. And it had a lot of board and batten construction. It was really beautiful to me, and it just reminds me of being in a farm. And so I wanted that special feeling here. You'll notice that the workshop, which at first seems, seemed palatious, seemed to shrink over time as my junk, uh, construction junk and everything uh, accumulated in the workshop. I first installed uh, kind of like a poor man's baseboard and crown molding on the floor and the ceiling. And then I moved to the center seam of the drywall and installed battens all around and added shaker pegs so I could hang my tools and other things, you know, clothes, hang my clothes out to dry, who knows. We'll, we'll figure out plenty of more reasons. Uh, the shakers were very intelligent people and I really am excited to use the shaker pegs here. So after I put the horizontal battens on, I, I put the vertical battens on and nailed them into the studs. I am extremely grateful that I finished the battens. It was so time consuming. And I'm really grateful for my wife who got out with me on a lot of those cold evenings to help me with, with uh, you know, the, the insulation and uh, she didn't help me with the, hanging the drywall, but uh, you know, putting up some of the battens. It was, she's a great gal. In the next video, you'll see the ceiling go up and you'll see paint, goes, paint go on the walls and you'll see all sorts of things I've been doing here on my farm to try and get ready for the winter. So I'm excited for you to be able to see this woodworking school come together and I hope you can come out and take some classes here in the future and or just drop by for a visit. Thanks for watching. If you're interested in learning traditional woodworking with hand tools, visit my website at woodandshop.com where you'll find free video tutorials, buying guides, workshop tours, and reviews. Make sure you subscribe to receive my regular blog posts and YouTube videos, and don't forget to check out my 10 steps for getting started. Enjoy!